Have you ever written code like this? If so, chances are you've probably introduced a bug into your code without even realizing it. In this video, I'm going to talk about why writing code like this can be problematic by discussing things like explicit and implicit type coercion and when you can safely use the bang operator. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today we're gonna to be talking about this little bit of code right here. If not number of children, then do something. This is code that you've probably written all the time where you just have a bang operator, which is what this exclamation point is called. You put in front of a variable to check to see if that variable is defined or has some type of value. But in some cases such as this, it's actually going to introduce a bug to your code that you may not realize. So essentially what this code is doing is we're checking to see if you enter a value for this input. And if you don't, we give you an error message. Otherwise we say success. So if I try to submit this, you can see, hey, please enter number of children. It gives me an error message. I come in here, I put two, for example, and now it says success. So you may think, okay, this is working. That's great. That's exactly what I want. But what happens if you try to enter zero as the number of children? Well, when you click submit, you're going to see it's giving us an error. It's saying, hey, you did not enter a number of children but clearly we've entered zero as our number of children. So something in the assumption of how we think our code is working is different from how it's actually working. In order to understand what's actually going wrong here, we need to understand a little closer how the bang operator works. So let's look at our code line by line. At the top, we just are getting all of our values we're using. That's not important. We have our event listener, which is running. And inside of here, we're getting our number of children by parsing the integer value of our input dot value. So it's converting this value to an integer. So it's either going to give us an integer like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or if we entered nothing, for example, if it does like parse int on an empty string, for example, or we do parse int on null, that's just going to return NAN, which is not a number. So that's what we're going to get. We're either going to get a number like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or we're going to get NAN being returned. Then we're just clearing out our messages, that's fine. And then we're getting to our actual if check. So what this if check does is it says, let me get the opposite of number of children. So in order to get the opposite of something, you need to first convert that thing to a Boolean value. So we're taking this number of children variable, which is an integer, and we're trying to convert that integer to a Boolean value. So in the case of when we have an integer like one, two, three, four, one of those types of numbers, or even like negative three, for example, that's going to convert to the value of true. Any integer except for zero is going to convert to true when you convert it to a Boolean. And then we're just getting the opposite of true, which is false, which is why when we type in something like one, two, negative three, it's giving us a success message because the opposite of true is false. So we're running the code inside this else check here. The other case that we can get besides the number zero is going to be NAN. NAN is like a special character inside a JavaScript that just stands for not a number, and this evaluates to false when we convert it to a Boolean. So we convert that to false when we do the conversion to Boolean, then we get the opposite of false, which is true. So when we enter nothing inside of here, it's going to give us this error message right here, as we would expect. But when we enter in the value of zero, zero is also considered false when you convert to a Boolean. So if you convert zero to a Boolean, you're going to get the value of false being returned, and then you get the opposite of false, which is true, which is why we're having this error message show up when we type in zero here, because zero is considered a falsy value. And there's quite a few values inside of JavaScript that are considered falsy. For example, an empty string that we have like right here, this is considered false. So if I were to just come in here and I say, what is the opposite of empty string? Well, when I click submit, you're going to see it says, please enter number because the opposite of an empty string is considered true. This conversion between different types in this scenario is called implicit type coercion. And essentially all that fancy terminology means is that the types of our values are being converted without us explicitly telling the type to convert. The other type of type coercion is called explicit type coercion. And that's when we're explicitly converting from one type to another. This parse in function is a great example of that because we're explicitly saying, hey, take this value that we pass in and convert it to an integer for us. So that's an explicit type coercion, which is generally something that's good because you're purposely doing this. You're telling the code to do it. While in an implicit type coercion, such as this down here, where we're taking this number of children variable, which we don't really know what it is. I mean, we do know it is an integer, but it could be anything. And we're trying to convert that to a Boolean. That is bad. That is implicit type coercion. And generally when you're dealing with that, you have a lot of bugs that could come up. This idea of implicit versus explicit type coercion is actually why most developers say to use triple equals when doing comparisons in JavaScript instead of double equals. Because when you do a double equals comparison, for example, number of children equals equals false, this is going to do an implicit type coercion where it converts one of these values to the same type as the other to compare them to see if they're equal to each other. Well, if you use triple equals, it's going to return false immediately if they're different types. It doesn't do any implicit type coercion. And if you want to learn more about this double equals versus triple equals syntax, I have a full video on it and a blog article. I'll link in the cards and description for you. 
So up until now, we've really only talked about why this could potentially be bad and cause bugs, but how do we actually get around this issue and write the code like we want? Well, in our case, we want to check to see if the number of children variable exists. So probably the best thing for us to do would be first to check to see if it exists. So we could at check to see if it is equal to null. And you'll notice here I'm using double equals instead of triple equals. When I check null and undefined, that's the only time I ever use double equals. Again, I cover that in the video I talked about earlier. So we can check to see if it's equal to null. But in our case, this won't actually solve the problem. If we click submit, you're going to see we get success. No matter what we type in here, it's always going to return success. And that's because, like I said, this is going to return to us a number like 0, 1, 2, 3, or it's going to return to us NAN. And NAN is technically not null. So in our case, since we know that we have a number here, we want to check to see if this is not a number. Now we can say, okay, if this is not a number, then that means that they didn't enter anything into the checkbox. So now we click submit. You can see it's please, please enter. Use one, it works. We use zero, it still works. The only time we get an error is when we enter nothing. But even if we enter zero, one, two, three, it's going to work properly. So in like 99% of use cases, what you're going to need to do is you're either going to need to check for is NAN or you're going to need to check for not equal to null or equal to null in our case. And then also you may want to check for both depending on the scenario, what your code is, you may need to also check to make sure that it is not a number. So you come in here and say, you know, number of children, not a number, whatever. You would need to write your code like this where you would check for multiple things depending on what happens in your code before you get to that if check. Now, I know writing all this out, this is a lot of code, especially when you just compare it to writing out this. This is maybe simpler and much easier. But the problem is, like I said, this could lead to potential bugs, but not always. There are some use cases where writing your code like this is perfectly fine. And really, the only use case I can think of where doing this is perfectly fine is where you know the variable you're working with is already a Boolean. So for example, let's just say we had a variable. We'll call it bool. We'll set it equal to true. And we came down here, and this is where we did our check for bool. This is perfectly fine because we're not doing any implicit type coercion. This Boolean variable right here is already a value of true or false. It's already a Boolean. So when we use the bang operator, we aren't converting it to a Boolean because it's already one. So it's just flipping the value. That's a perfectly good use case for this bang operator. But the problem is most people try to use this bang operator as a way to write like five or six less characters of code. When in reality, writing those extra characters not only makes it so you are less prone to bugs, but also it's going to make your code much more explicit to see exactly what's going on. Because if you're just scanning the code file, you're like scrolling through really quickly looking at the code, it's really easy to miss this single exclamation point at the beginning of you know this variable. When if you had something like not equal to null, if we just write that out, this sticks out much easier. So as you're scrolling through and scanning the code, which is what you do all the time as a developer, this is much more clear what it's actually checking versus when we had that bang operator in the front. Now, if you enjoyed this quick tip, you're going to absolutely love my full JavaScript simplified course. It'll be linked down in the description. This course not only teaches you how to think like a developer, but also goes over all the different concepts in JavaScript so that you understand them at a fundamental level, which means you're never going to run into these problems and accidentally write this kind of buggy code because you're going to understand how the language works and you're going to make sure that you write your code around that. So if you're interested, that's going to be linked down in the description below. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.